What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished before the end of this century. I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. The United States is surrounded by enemies, particularly rogue nuclear armed or nuclear arming rogue states wedded to insane, apocalyptic, uh, nationalistic, imperialistic ideologies such as the modest or 12er Shiite regime in Iran or the Jush ideology dominated uh, reg Kim regime in North Korea. The United States needs a third way. We can't pull back. We don't want to have to go to war. The United States needs space-based weapons. Hello and welcome to the Weikert Report's next edition of the Risk Assessment on Space-Based Weapons and the Potentiality of War. I'm Brandon Weikert, founder and CEO of the Weikert Report. What I'm proposing is nothing new. Ronald Reagan proposed this uh, Star Wars Strategic Defense Initiative system uh, in 1983 as a means of nullifying the Soviet nuclear threat to the United States. He wanted to move the United States foreign policy away from one of what he believed to be insane and immoral mutual assured destruction, which was, as Derek Labert referred to it as in the 50-year wound, a suicide pact. Um, and he wanted to move us toward mutually assured survival. Reagan administration's logic was, once the nuclear threat was removed, the Soviets could not compete with the United States economically, societally, or even militarily. America's economic and scientific dominance were simply too great at that end by the 1980s, despite whatever the Soviet propaganda was saying. Uh, unfortunately, the technical means were not there to really fully realize this dream, but it did start certain scientific community, members of the scientific community, certain members within the policymaking community to always keep this concept in the back of our minds. And we've spent decades developing really incredible technologies on our, with, you know, devoid of uh, worrying about this, you know, geopolitical situation. Uh, now we're in a period of time where the threat of nuclear rogue states is so high. The technology is so advanced today in the on the American side. And um, finally, with the rise of the Trump administration, their announcement of create, recreating the Space Council, of investing in, in create, making space a private economic endeavor, uh, of, of militarizing space more than it already is, um, we may finally have the needed political will to take the, the American national security to the next step. We don't want to fight expensive ground wars anymore. We shouldn't have to either in today's high-tech environment. I'm not saying that we'll never need boots on the ground or that even if space-based weapons suddenly became a reality, we're never going to need boots on the ground. What I'm saying, though, is America has always enjoyed a strategic position or a rather American grand strategy and foreign policy has gone best when it intervenes least um, or from afar. This is known as offshore balancing. And so the goal has always been, since the failure of the Iraq War, to get us back to offshore balancing. We just had a heck of a time trying to get there. Um, this is one way to do that. By redirecting the sizable Defense Department budget toward a Manhattan Project-like endeavor, instead of developing nuclear weapons, we're actually developing, initially, defensive weapons, space-based weapons fully realizing Reagan's dream from in the 1980s. If we can do this, the United States will have immediately rendered the nuclear threat of North Korea and Iran irrelevant. Because even if they, they do have uh, workable nukes, which we believe North Korea in particular does, and we know that Iran has the basic know-how and means to build it, they just they don't have everything they need 
in terms of resources because of the sanctions. Now, the sanctions have been lifted, though, under the Obama executive agreement. Things may start changing, especially since Iran is sharing nuclear technology development with North Korea. The North Koreans, for their part, are believed to have a minimum of 10 working nuclear devices. As of last year, they have basic ability to miniaturize those nuclear weapons, which means they can be placed upon intercontinental ballistic missiles. And as of last week, they now have ICBMs, as we reported here at the Weikert Report. All that this entails is that the United States needs a third way. And that third way is placing missile defense systems in orbit. We have the technology, we just need to bring it together. We have the funding, we just need to divert it away from building the Wunderwaffe of the, uh, of the, the failed F-35 and irrelevant now F-22 budgets and the LCS budgets. And we need to divert that into developing uh, space-based weapons, satellite defense systems, and hopefully even eventually manned battle stations. And we seem to be moving toward that because U.S. Congress is now officially seriously debating the creation of an independent fifth branch of the U.S. military, a Space Corps or a Space Force. The Air Force, as usual, is fighting it because of the budgetary restrictions that will impose upon them. The Navy wants to have their... their uh, they want to have an outsized role in space, which the Air Force has been keeping them back from, uh, and the creation of a new branch would only further deny the Navy the capability to have the kind of influence they want in space operations. All things being equal, though, we need an independent force. It needs to have freedom of budget and freedom of action to do the things it needs to do, and we first need to have space-based missile defense. You see, right now we have rudimentary ballistic missile defense systems in the form of the Iron Dome in, in Israel and THAAD in South Korea, and they're very effective. Uh, we also tried some, a sea-based one under Obama administration, which was nowhere near as effective, the anti-ballistic missile defense system. Um, the problem is, though, uh, these systems are rudimentary. They require waiting for incoming nuclear missiles to get close enough to the country using the ballistic missile defense system to have to launch up against gravity to try to, like a bullet hitting a bullet, try to reach out and hit that incoming missile. It, it, the, the odds of success are very low. We increase the odds of success by placing weapon uh, missile defense weapon systems in orbit in the zero g environment furthermore if we place them in higher orbital planes or on multiple orbital planes where we create a grid we'll have what's known as redundancy and so no matter what country fires the nuke and no matter what trajectory it's on no matter what speed it's on there will always be higher ground dominated by the American defensive systems. And whether it's using a laser system like Reagan wanted or using another projectile or using a combination of both is irrelevant. The fact is the odds of success will be so great that it will increase the cost of launch onto the launching side rather than to the defending side. Furthermore, from there, we're going to need to put weapon systems, offensive weapon systems in orbit. Those systems will be used to not only will have the defensive capabilities, but then we'll be able to raise the stakes further on rogue and rival states that will basically force them to comport with the American-led international system. It will reduce global conflicts and force uh, more... Um, the more competitive energies away from kinetic warfare into economic uh, competition, which is what America has always wanted from the world. Uh, less war, more trade. Uh, even in today's world, uh, we still favor uh, capitalism and economics, despite what the detractors of the Trump administration say. The downside is, of course, we'll have to contend with Russian and Iran, uh, Russian and Chinese response in space. But as I've outlined in my previous lecture series at the Institute of World Politics, as I've written in Orbis, uh, Foreign Policy Research Institute's uh, uh, Foreign Policy Journal, World Affairs Journal, the Russians and Chinese in particular are already not only militarizing space, as the United States has done over the last 50 years, but they are also looking at weaponizing space. Um, they're, they're doing it. They're going to do it because they recognize it right now as a weak point to exploit against the United States because until recently we haven't even been talking about 
space as a strategic domain. The United States being threatened the way it is with nukes, with the stakes so high and the margin of error so, so small, we need a new way to defend ourselves and our allies without just throwing our hands up and becoming Fortress America. That won't keep the enemies at bay as history has proven. We need to create forward defenses, not on land, not on the sea, not at sea, not in the air, but in space. The risk for war with North Korea right now is higher than it's been in decades. The probability of American success is high in such a war, but the costs, it will probably be at worst a Pyrrhic victory or probably just be a very costly victory that will take decades, years and decades to recover from. Um, the deployment of space-based systems, while expensive and while diplomatically challenging because of international community standards and opposition and antipathy to the creation of such systems, once those systems are fielded, we will have the all-powerful first-mover advantage and we will be able to dictate the terms and course of events in terms of the response of rival states like China and Russia in space. Uh, this will give us the strategic advantage. For the Weikert Report, this has been a risk assessment on space-based weapons. The risk is low to America in the kinetic realm and over the long term. The risk for diplomatic fallout is high, but I would think that the far greater concern would be any fallout from a war on the Korean Peninsula or a war with Iran. This mitigates that. We need a new galvanizing project like the Manhattan Project of old, except this time we're creating a purely defensive system that will not have the kind of negative fallout that, nu that nuclear weapons ended up having. This is a civilization defending or protecting uh, weapon as opposed to a civilization ending weapon as nukes ended up being. For the Weikert Report, I'm Brandon Weikert. This has been a risk assessment on space-based weapons. Thank you so much.